All right, so uh, 7.4 now, um, and 7.4 is inverse functions. So let's take a look at some inverse functions. Basically, all that this whole section is about is finding inverse functions. All right, no biggie, right? But what does that mean? Well, that means we want to treat f of x as if it's y. So we'll say this is y equals 1 minus 4x. All of this really means is I want you to solve for x. Solve for x. So to do that, this is a positive 1, right? So I'm going to minus 1 to both sides, so I get y minus 1 equals negative 4x, because that stuff's all gone. So negative 4 times x means to get x by itself, and you divide both sides by a negative 4, um, by a negative 4. So you end up getting x equals, because that crosses out, y minus 1 over negative 4. Now, there's the inverse, but if you wanted to graph that, if you wanted to graph it, you can't graph anything in terms of x. So what that means is you need to flip-flop the x and the y. So if you wanted to graph it, this is what you'd have to write down in order to um, graph that inside the little cloud here. The next problem is, once again, same way. Let's see it as though I am... Um, writing it in terms of y. So in order to solve for x, I have a square root, so to get rid of a square root I need to square both sides. So I end up getting y squared, y squared equals x plus 1. So you get x by itself, I subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x equals y squared minus 1. So there's your inverse. Except once again, if you want to graph it, if you want to graph it, we got to switch them up, so we get y equals x squared minus 1. So we can graph that. Alright, next one here, write it in terms of y. y equals square root of 4 minus x. So to get rid of a squared, I have to square, or square root, I have to square them. So I get y squared equals, um, sorry, just 4 minus x. So I would subtract a 4 on both sides to try to get x by itself. So I end up with negative x equals um, y squared minus 4. And I would divide both sides by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative. So I get x equals, um, and divide it by a negative just basically means that's a negative y squared, and that's now a positive 4. But once again, that is correct, except if you want to graph it, we have to switch those around. So I end up getting y equals negative x squared plus 4, if I wanted to graph it. All right, uh, nothing changes, even though this is a cube root. It's like saying the cube root now. y equals the cube root of 5x minus 3. Well, the cube root, to get rid of a cube root, I need to cube both sides. So I cube them. So I get y cubed equals, those are gone. Uh, 5x minus 3. So to get rid of the x, I need to add 3 to both sides. So I add 3 to both sides. So now I have 5x equals y cubed plus 3. Well, to get rid of the 5, it's 5 times x. So I need to divide both sides by 5. So when I do that, I get x equals um, y cubed plus 3 over 5, which is fine, except um, if I wanted to graph that, I need to switch those around. So I get y equals x cubed plus 3 divided by 5. Okay, to solve this one now, it's like saying y equals 2x cubed plus 5. So to get x by itself, I need to subtract 5 on both sides. So I get y minus 5 equals 2x cubed. It's 2 times x, so I divide by 2 on both sides. So I get y minus 5 divided by 2 equals x cubed. So I cube root, right, I'm cube rooting both sides, so I end up getting cube root of y minus 5 over 2 equals x. 
However, that is right, but if I wanted to graph it, once again, I need to swap those if I want to graph it. So if I wanted to graph it, it would be y equals the cube root of x minus 5 over 2. So if I wanted to cube root it, there you go. And that's basically it. That's uh, solving inverse functions. Uh, so I hope that helped uh, with you finding inverses of functions. That's the hardest part. Um, of the entire section. So uh, take a look at those, and if you have any other questions or concerns, please let me know.